about 30 years ago. I came to the door because I wanted to look at the organ. They offered me the job of scheduling, and so I ended up scheduling these concerts for the last 30 years. I still sometimes come in at a drop of a hat if someone gets sick and can't perform. It's free to attend, and there's free coffee, and uh, we always have a good time. It really was painful to stand up on March 11th of 2020 and tell the audience that we were going to be closing indefinitely and haven't scheduled anybody for 2021 until now. We're able to do 14 concerts between September 22nd and December 22nd where they will be live streamed online. The old church and its mission to provide a community center of music is so important and we're so glad we can be part of this future of Portland. The free concerts at noon are balanced by the evening concerts that happen here almost every night these days, or at least before COVID. These concerts rely on your donations, and since we don't have a tip jar right now and you're watching from home, if you can find it possible to send us a donation either using the link below or by mailing us a check even at the old church address we will be happy to receive them and they will help ensure the future of these concerts i'm very happy to promote the old church i i hope i can do it for many more years until i peter out or something i don't know i i have no plans to retire from this volunteer position so Hello and welcome to this concert from the Old Church in Portland, Oregon. My name is Diane Chaplin and I'm going to be playing a program called Echoes of Ancient Voices. The five works on this concert are all things that are inspired by music of an earlier time. The first work is written by a cellist and composer named Mikal Stahel. He lives in Slovakia and he wrote this piece in 2012. He is primarily a Baroque cellist, meaning that he plays on an instrument similar to this one that is set up in a Baroque mode. And in fact, my cello is almost 300 years old. So it started out its life as a Baroque cello, but now it's set up with steel strings and an end pin and some other modifications that make it sound bright and loud for the modern concert audience. Um, because Mikhail Stahel plays a Baroque cello, much of the music that he writes is in a sort of imitation Baroque style, if you will. So I think you'll find most of this piece sounds very much like it was written 300 years ago, except for the little places where it doesn't. This is Song of Solitude by Mikhail Stahel. Thank you. 
is also in a quasi-baroque style. This was written by the French romantic composer Benjamin Godard, who died in 1895, and this piece was written in the final year of his life, originally for the violin. He called it his second violin sonata. Uh, he has, has written in, it is a romantic style, but with Baroque elements, and in particular, he has named the movements with Baroque dance titles. So it is in a four movement form, slow movement, fast, slow, fast. The first movement is called Sarabande. The second movement is a rigodon, which is a lively dance. The third movement is an adagio, and the fourth movement is a bore. So this is the second sonata originally for violin by Benjamin Godard. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Thank you. 
Um, the next piece is by the British composer John Tavener. Um, and actually, this, this week, we are celebrating his death in 2013, as well as um, the um, composition of this particular piece, which he wrote this week in 1990. And he wrote this piece upon the death of a very good friend in Greece. The piece is called Thrinos. And Thrinos in Greece is the same word as threnody in English, slightly strange word, uh, which means lament or elegy. Uh, the, the Thrinos is a very, very old form in Greek. You can find it in the writings of Homer more than 2,000 years ago. Um, nowadays, it is used as a chant, somewhat like a Gregorian chant, so the Greek Orthodox church version of, the, of that kind of a chant. And it is chanted, the Thrinos is chanted on Good Friday in the church. Um, and as well, there is sort of a custom amongst the people that it was chanted over the dead body of a close friend uh, when they died. So this piece is written um, in memory of John Tavener's friend. This is called Thrinos by John Tavener.
The next piece on the program is a work by an American composer named Caroline Shaw. The work was written in 2009, and it is inspired by uh, music from the Renaissance period. The piece is called In Manus Tuas, which means in your hands, and it's based loosely on a motet by Thomas Tallis, who was a Renaissance composer uh, renowned for vocal music for the most part. Uh, and I will read you what the composer wrote about this piece. While there are only a few, excuse me, I will start that again. While there are only a few slices of this piece, that reflect exact harmonic changes in the talus setting of the motet, the motion, or lack thereof, is intended to capture this sensation of a single moment of hearing this work in a particular and remarkable church. One thing you will note uh, is the composer writes these bits, which she writes as little scribbly things on the music, which she calls non-pitched sound, uh, and it sounds scratchy or like something is going wrong. Those are on, on purpose. Um, and I, I, I think we, we can see them kind of interpret them as maybe pulling away the cobwebs of the ancient music.
on today's program is by Coleridge Taylor Perkinson, uh, possibly one of the most important African-American musicians in the late 20th century. He died in 2004. He was active in New York as a composer, conductor, and in 1973 he wrote this work, which is called Lamentations Black Folk Song Suite. It is in four movements, and each of the movements references some aspect of traditional African-American music. So the first movement is called fuguing tune. And the fuguing tune is something with a very long history. It came over from England to New England in the 1700s and then made its way south till it became a mainstay of African-American church singing style. And a, a fugue is a, a work where there are voices that re repeat the same kind of music over and over. And I think you'll hear that kind of overlapping of voices in this first movement. Plus, it's very jazzy, bluesy. Um, the second movement is the slow movement, and it is called song form. The marking on it is plaintive, meaning crying. And I think here we can see uh, what the composer has said about the whole work when he was asked what this music was based on in the African American experience. He said, the common denominator of these tunes is the reflection and statement of a people's crying out. The third movement is called Calvary Ostinato, and Ostinato is a repeated pattern. You'll hear that happening. Um, but the Calvary part takes its name from an African-American spiritual that has the refrain, surely he died on Calvary, which is, of course, a reference to Jesus dying on the cross. But it is also seen as a veiled reference to lynching. Uh, the final movement is called Perpetual Motion, and it consists of alternating notes in a, in a style that can be seen as coming from African plucked instruments, uh, which then kind of turned into the banjo, actually, in our country. But the enslaved people brought with them some of their instruments uh, that were plucked string instruments. And I think you'll hear this, this uh, rhythmic idea in that movement. So this is Lamentations Black Folk Song Suite by Coleridge Taylor Perkinson.
Thank you. 
Thank you.